Broadcasting live from Detroit, Michigan, and all around the world. The church militant is Mike. Here's your host, Michael Morris. Hey, hello, everyone, and welcome to Mike Up Church TV, coming to you here from Detroit. And boy, oh boy, this will be a show you will not forget. We have controversy on top of controversy on top of controversy, as big as, well, you might say, the cosmos. We're going to be talking to the two producers of uh, the massively controversial death threat movie uh, called The Principal, about Copernicus and how he laid the ground for, uh, or not he, but how his principal laid the ground for what we now experience as modernity, set the stage for what has been labeled a battle between science and faith and all of that good stuff. We are very, very happy to have back on the show, although some people out there are not happy that we have them back on the show. Rick Delano, how are you, Rick? Great, man. Thank you for having us back. Uh, Thank you very much. And Bob Sungenis, how are you? I'm very good. Thank you. Yes, we are... uh, the show is the principal. The movie's the principal. Mm-hmm. Now, be, before the show is over tonight, and of course we're going to tease this in the mm-hmm. language of the industry, we call it a deep tease, means it happens way at the end of the show. Uh, we're going to tell you when the movie is going to open. Uh, the two gentlemen here promised that when we were on the show before that you would come back on and tell us when you had a release date, going to open up in theaters. You have got to see this movie, folks. We just had a showing out here for about 20 or 30 people, and they were like, when this was over. So, the very first thing we want to cover uh, with regard to this movie, what is the, Comper- the Copernican principle, and what is its significance beyond just a bunch of mumbo-jumbo cosmo- cosmology science? What is it? The Copernican principle basically is the idea that the Earth is somewhere out there in the remote recesses of space in no special place with no special meaning no special significance it just got there by time and chance and we're just as insignificant as any piece of rock or planet or star in the universe and we just happen to have people on it that have conscious existence but that's no big deal because we're just a cosmic accident it just happened to be that way so that extending that out sociologically and we just really aren't anything we're just a little cosmic blip somewhere in the middle of nowhere and oh well, just maybe a bunch of atoms came together and here we are. And that's just all product of science and therefore everything that church and religion have said for all these years really doesn't mean anything. There is no God. We aren't specially created. Our home isn't anything, all that, right? Right, and there's no continuation. Once it all expands and then contracts and uh, you know evaporates, whatever it does, whatever they think it does, that's it. It's all over. So all those molecules go to who knows where into oblivion, and that's it. There's no afterlife. There's no beginning to it. It's just there, and then it's gone. So the, the, the principle's principle effect is a destruction of the whole previous order of understanding that there is a God. And we have not only a place in the universe, we have a special place in the universe, and we have a destiny. That's what happens when you put the Copernican principle in, which says we aren't special, and it replaces the old world order, right? Right. The Catholic worldview, and whenever you read medieval uh, art or, or, or theology, you know, the earth was always considered to be the place of the incarnation of the Son of God, that all the vastness out there was you know, really insignificant compared to that. Right. And so it's really a completely different way of looking at the cosmos. If we're at the center and God has created us as the place of the incarnation of his son, you view the rest of the universe in one way. If we are a cosmic accident and we are just one of hundreds of billions of planets that are just like ours and there's billions of other species out there, well, that's an entirely different view of the cosmos. We happen to live at a time where... This very simple question, what is our place in the cosmos, has launched the last two scientific revolutions, the Copernican Revolution and relativity. We're both based on this puzzlingly persistent question, what is our place in the cosmos? As Lawrence Krauss has said, we could be living at a time when Copernicus is coming back to haunt us because new observations of the cosmos' largest scales are absolutely shocking. To those of us who have grown up from birth being told that 
We're just an insignificant rock orbiting an insignificant star and an insignificant. Guess what? What we're seeing now on the universe's largest scales is shockingly contrary to that assumption. So we wanted to make this film. We set out to make this film. We put a trailer up when we came and saw you in Detroit last time, and it has just gone absolutely bonkers. We're all over the world now. I mean, Der Spiegel, Time, you know, NPR. And, and, the and, and they're all flattering reviews. Oh, they love the film. Love, you know. <laughs> well, this is the funny thing. Our, 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 um, our marketing guy in Hollywood, who happens to be Jewish, by the way, and who was just shocked by this attack on our film because he saw the film and loved it and knows it has nothing to do with the Jews. I mean, he said, you know, you're a lock for a special award next year. And I said, oh, really? Well, what's that? He said, well, you're going to get an award in the special category, most reviewed film in history by folks who've never bothered to watch it first. <laughs> so anyway, they claim that we've duped these people, that we tricked these people. That, in fact, we are devious. Now, we're talking right now that they, right now, we're talking about is just the secular press. Yeah, this story came out of nowhere. We were nothing. We were a little indie film, you know, interesting concept. Oh, man, place of the Earth and the Cosmos. Yeah, interesting. In one 24-hour period, we went whoosh and became, I think, at one point, the third largest trending story on the World Wide Web. There were 150 news outlets that carried this story. A hundred in twenty four hour period. Yeah. In a twenty four hour period. And it was always the same story. Duped into film by evil geocentrist Holocaust deniers. Really? Okay. And <laughs> let's, let's get something straight right now. I, I don't, I'll get into this later, but just to clear the record. Are you a Holocaust denier? I am not. Do you hate Jews? I do not. Are you a Holocaust denier? No. Do you hate Jews? No. Okay, let's move on. Okay, thank um, you. <laughs> that should have been all it took, yeah. right? Uh, but here's the thing. So, you know, we believe in full disclosure here. We want to be honest. We really did bend over backward to make a fair-minded film, and I think anybody who saw it here knows that we were certainly a lot more fair to the oppon opponents of our particular viewpoint than... Yeah, than the shoe on the other foot. <laughs> yeah, you'd you'd have been demolished. Exactly. Let, let, let me ask Bob very quickly. Bob, do you have... Uh, I, I mean, your, your research and work and, and things you were coming across and then digging was really kind of the, the very beginning of this, like, hmm... Is this stuff true? Right? Is is that how the the, the whole thing finally began? Yeah, that was eleven years ago. Okay. Yeah, I made that faithful decision to press the wrong button on my uh, <laughs> my keyboard, and it came up with this PhD talking in astronomy, no less, talking about the Earth being in a special place. And I had to make that faithful decision: whether I was going to press that key or not. And I pressed it eleven years ago, and here we are today. So yeah, I had to do the research to find out. I had a science background. I had a theological background, the biblical background, to do all the research that I needed to do. And when push came to shove, I found the evidence, and I really, I just couldn't deny it. It was there. It was plain as day. So you get involved. You, you come across his work. You're like, oh, wow, there's, we need to make a movie about this. Oh, well, it was really funny. I, I first ran into Bob when he was running a $1,000 reward for anybody who could provide scientific proof of the earth going around the sun. And I said, boy, I could use a 1000 bucks. And I watched this site. It became like I had to go every day because yeah. some brilliant argument would get posted. I think, well, that guy certainly won it. And then I'd come back the next day, and Bob would demolish it. And I was going, whoa. So I got fascinated. So I bought the book. I read the book. And that was just you know, the beginning. What's the name of the book? Galileo was wrong. The church was right. And so I got fascinated. And as the science began to develop because we were putting up these satellites and these satellites were reporting back this amazingly non-Copernican evidence. I started working more closely with Bob. Bob wanted to make the film. I didn't want any part of it. You know, I mean, what, what am I going to do? Bob had other directors, other producers, and he just wasn't comfortable with any of the proposals that they had brought. So he asked me, Rick, look, you're the only guy who could do this. And I said, Bob, are you sure? And he says, yeah. I says, okay. I'll give it my best shot. And I said, we've got to tell this story in the most ridiculously even-handed way possible because our opponents would never do the same for us. Right. And importantly, once all the hype is gone, the movie's going to stand or fall sure. on how good the film is. Yeah, exactly. exactly. And we That's know, always the case. Yeah, and we know that we've made a film that is nothing like this media story. That's been going, and everybody who's seen the film now knows that. It's yeah, it's very funny to, to hear this. You know, you know, the, the, all of the to get to the first point here about the about people being duped. 
the, the movie comes out, people are being, people in the film, the, the scientists you're interviewing are getting these, these pieces of information through various sources, we'll get to that later, uh, and being told, hey, they misquoted you, hey, they duped you, hey, this is wrong, hey, God. even, and there's many people watching may not know most of these names, but they'll all certainly know Kate Mulgrew, and she's, you know, Captain Janeway mm-hmm. from the Star Trek series, uh, sure. it was popular, you know, 15, 15 years or so ago, you recognize her voice immediately, uh, she posts something on Facebook, oh my gosh, I was duped, had she seen the film at that point? None of them have, Mike. All of these guys, all not- of these scientists. The most reviewed film in history by people who've never bothered to watch it first. All right. Because we are touching a nerve here. Yes, that's the point. And the nerve is so sensitive that, you know, the normal civilizational constructs like evidence, fact-checking, you know, these people saying we were duped, the newspapers could have called me. I could have showed them the release forms. We're going to show them to your we'll audience to tonight. tonight. It's not like this is a hard thing mm-hmm. to blow up. We're sure. going to blow it up completely yeah, tonight. Let's, so, so let's, go, let's go do it. Let's start first. Well, let's... I should mention. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, th- this is sarcasm, folks. <laughs> Put sarcasm on the oh, screen. This okay. is sarcasm. Well, well it's true. <laughs> we wanted to get a little bit of a laugh going here because <laughs> sure. to us, this really is funny. Yeah. Um, we were saying duped, 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 tricked. Well, My director was going through the raw footage. We interviewed Max Tegmark twice, Uh once in 2011, 2013. So obviously the dupe must have lasted for a very long time. Very smart fellow guy. Very smart guy. What I had forgotten about was that when we first interviewed him in 2011, we asked him, as we asked everybody, tell us who you are and tell us what your academic affiliation is. And I had forgotten that old Max had played a little bit of a trick on us. And we thought it would be amusing in the context of what, uh, what's going on here. If we could actually just roll and see what Max said when we asked him to identify himself well, first time. Let's go ahead and roll the tape here with Max. All right, um, Max, can I get um, your full name and spelled? And then let me know, uh, give me what you do, where you're at right now, and what you're very well known for. Okay, uh, my name is Joe. I'm a plumber at MIT, and I, but I managed to, uh, I managed to, uh, <laughs> trick this film crew into thinking I'm actually a, a professor there just because I was wearing a tie. And uh, that's what I do. I'm a con artist. <laughs> My nom de plume is, is Max Tegmark. I pretend I'm a professor at uh, MIT. So we were. So Max Tegmark is actually a plumber. Joe the plumber. He's Joe the plumber. He fooled you guys into it. So we must have been hypnotized, Mike. Who, who do too here? <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, you know, it is funny. It's laughable, um, and and it is sometimes you just have to laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, and, and I think that it's a good way to start. It's, it's, now, a, it's a good way to start because well, I think what the 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 home audience really needs to understand here is that this is the charge. This is, this the is charge, what he right? said about that, us. That you guys are we these crazy them. wackos, and you went around, lied, did everything you could to get these guys to say things. <laughs> yeah. You know, they didn't realize that they were being recorded. I don't know how you miss that when there's a camera <laughs> That's sitting true. in the room with lights and technicians and but, microphones. Anyway, they all this stuff, and they say, "Oh, we didn't know any of this," that, but they signed releases. Of course, yeah, every single one. Of them. I want to make this very clear, just because you know. The media has run with this story. Here's the simple truth. We're going to show you the release forms of the two guys who've actually called into question, yeah. whether they ever signed one. Anybody else wants to call into question? We got those too. And clearly each one of those releases says that we are going to actively seek out controversial cosmological theories. That's it. I mean, it, 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 we told them exactly what we intended to do. Let me ask do. this. Big question. This is what it all comes down to, right? Mm-hmm. Did they get checks for their work? They sure did. Did they cash the checks? They did. <laughs> Show me the money. <laughs> All right. They were not duped when it came to cashing no, the check. No, they, they yeah. didn't get duped on cashing the check. Now, here's the thing. Max, for example, said, was quoted as saying in Popular Science magazine, that we claim to be an independent film team. Well, we are guilty of that. And that we claimed to be making a normal cosmology doc. Well... I don't think we ever claim to be making a normal cosmology doc. Anybody who's seen it will know right away it's not. Right. It's an extraordinary cosmology doc. The question is, did Max know that we were going to talk about things like the Earth in the center of the universe? Or was he somehow tricked? This next clip, I think, is going to definitively address whether we made a normal cosmology doc 
and whether Max had any idea that we were talking about things like the Earth being in the center and of the Earth. This is universe. a side chat with you. and Yeah, this is from his first interview. Uh, I was interviewing him, and if you just give a listen, I think it'll uh, make it quite clear that we were very upfront about what we were talking Let's about. Let's roll the clip. Let me read a quote, another quote from Professor Krauss, yeah. and, and, just get, and, and then we can move on from this particular aspect, because... The centrality of Earth in the cosmic microwave background is a fascinating, yeah, it could be a mistake, it could be a glitch, but there are other elements that mm -hmm. are pointing in the same direction. Now, Krauss says, Professor Krauss says, when you look at the CMB map, you see that the structure that is observed is in, a fact, in fact, in a weird way, correlated with the plane of the Earth around the Sun. Is this Copernicus coming back to haunt us? That's crazy. We're looking out at the whole universe. There's no way there should be a correlation of structure with our motion of the Earth around the Sun, the plane of the uh, Earth around the Sun, the ecliptic. That would say we are truly the center of the universe. Would you agree with that assessment? <laughs> I don't think that this is telling us that Earth is in any way the center of the universe. If it turns out that these strange patterns are in some way lined up with our solar system, I think it's more likely that uh, my esteemed colleagues who did this experiment somehow have some additional little systematic problem with, with their measurements that gets contaminated by something to do with the solar system. Okay, now that's All right, th that's very interesting. Yeah, that's okay. Forget about forget about the science of what he's talking about. We're talking about the background of the film being yeah. made here. Yeah. How could he sits there and talks about? the Earth being the center of the universe, but it's not really. I mean, how could he not know what you were talking about? He couldn't. And okay. so why And, and he knew happening? he was on camera at that Of point. course he did. Okay. The, okay, the so other thing that's important here is we allowed him to give his view. Right. How do you view that? So we didn't make him into a geocentrist. We right. allowed him to express his view, which is That was in 2011. And that was, yeah. the, that was before important. the Planck satellite stuff came out. Yeah, back. this okay. before the Planck. Now, that's a very good point. All right. Remember... He says, I don't think this makes the Earth the center because it's more likely that there's something wrong in the data. Keep that in mind. Right. Because that's exactly what Larry Krauss says mm -hmm. later on in the film. And at the end of our film, we actually go back and ask Max yeah. after Planck comes out. Do you still think that? Mm -hmm. We'll get to that yeah, in a little a, bit. Yeah, that's a thing. We move, let's move on here to Lawrence Krauss. Now, Lawrence Krauss is, uh, give me a summary very quickly of Lawrence Krauss. He's an intelligent guy, uh, but he's in this whole milieu of atheistic cosmology, you know, where you have to explain where we came from without believing that there's a God who created it. Mm -hmm. How are you going to do that? Mm -hmm. Well, you're going to start inventing all of these theories, multiverses and quantum soup and all this kind of stuff that's, that we have in our movie. He's quoted saying all this stuff. But he's in the same position that all the other cosmologists are in. If you don't start with an infinite being created at all, you're going to go in all different kinds of directions Crazy trying to confusion. explain it. Yeah. And you guys go and interview him because he's kind of the, eh, maybe not you know, the leading spokesman, but you know, he's, he's out there as you know, one, of the, one of the face men of the whole what you just described, you know, uh, understanding of the, of the universe. Listen, yeah. Lawrence. He's, he's an important Cr voice to have in the show. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Lawrence okay. Cross is the guy you call if you want somebody to go on here and bash Christians. Man. Yeah, and I, he, should, I should mention he's been on TV, Odd Infinitum, and mm -hmm. so has Michio Kaku and a few other of these guys. Oh, yeah. They're all over the media. Yeah. And that's why we picked them, because they're the major spokesmen. Now, yeah. we, have a, we have a clip with him, too, right? Yeah, now we just want to address, because La now Lawrence started this whole thing. Yeah. When he gave a fascinating interview to NPR where he basically said, I don't remember doing this interview. If I did it, they probably just grabbed footage of me off the internet. And if they didn't, then they must have bought it from another production company. And if they didn't, well, then I probably signed a release form that I don't remember. I just don't know. What that is sounds that? like his answer to how did the universe come to be. Here's 400 explanations that don't make sense, and in the end, I just don't know. I just don't know. Yeah. So why did NPR consider this to be a national news story? Well, I don't know. But what I can do tonight is I can make it so that Lawrence knows. Uh, we went to ASU. We had him sign a release form, which we'll show you in a second. Arizona State University, that's where he is. And, you know, our crew asked him to tell us who he was, and uh, if you roll the clip, you'll see him saying no, Well, let's roll the clip. Can you just tell me what your name and your background and what you're doing here? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually being filmed right now, but uh, uh, my name is Lawrence Krauss, and I'm a uh, theoretical physicist and cosmologist, not to be confused with cosmetologist. And... Uh, 
my background is I, I have a PhD in physics and, um, and after, from MIT, and then after that I was at Harvard for a while and then at Yale for what seemed like an eternity, and then had a long respite in Cleveland, then moved here to direct uh, the Origins Project at Arizona State University, which examines everything from the origin of the universe to the origin of co consciousness. So I'm very excited about that. I'm also foundation professor in the School of Earth and Space Exploration at Arizona State University and professor of physics. That's a mouthful. Well, it certainly is a mouthful, and I've got to say right now, when the very first thing out of your full mouth is, quote, I'm, I'm being actually being filmed right now. <laughs> That's quite a damning statement. Yeah, well, he, he and, may be very smart, but he's not very intelligent because you can't say that and then say, I didn't know I was on camera. Yeah, well, you know, look, let's be fair. The guy gets interviewed a lot. Maybe he didn't remember. I want to give these guys the benefit of the doubt. Yeah, we don't. I have this to say. is, uh, <laughs> you know, you just don't get to. You don't, no, 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 look, look. look. There, is, there is a Goliath, a Goliath aligned against you guys, what you stand for, what you're showing here in a very fair way. I don't think anybody who watched this show uh, tonight out here in our preview, or, you know, I just, this is my second time I've seen it. Nobody could look at this and say, oh, look, this is a bunch of crazy Bible bashers smashing science and, you know, all that. It's nothing like that whatsoever. It is an excellent film. You went to all the right people to sit here and ask and say, what do you think? Da -da. Okay, guys, we're not telling you what it is. We're just saying, how do you explain this data? And you're stumped. So if you're stumped, doesn't that mean uh, maybe your little world you've created, your scientific world, doesn't really hold water? Maybe, maybe it leaks? Yeah, maybe <laughs> instead of having to add all of these assumptions to our model, maybe we should go back and look at the foundational assumptions. Sure. Yeah. That's a fair question to ask these guys. And unfortunately... Now, the uh, fact that... And again, to, we, we would, <clears throat> by the way, folks, we've, we've attached a link to the show here. If you want to see the 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 earlier mic'd up that talks about the content of the show, Yes, please, you should watch it. Uh, however, in the meantime, tonight we're really concentrating on all of the hoopla mm -hmm. and the controversy and the death threats and everything else that have come out as a result of uh, what this is. Now, uh, uh, we'll get into it a little bit later in the show, but it's, it's, the origin of it. But Lawrence Krauss signed a release form. Here it is. Yeah, there's let's, been let's fifth, roll the release 1,500 form. news articles saying that it doesn't exist. Yes, it exists. And let's show it. it real quick. Yes, it does tell him that we're going to be seeking out controversial. It's the same release. Everybody got the same it's release. A, right? Everybody got yeah, the same Yeah, your lawyers release. made it up. There's no and multiple releases. It's very clear, cut, and dry. Is there a, uh, is there a uh, uh, everybody got paid something? Everybody got Did paid. Did cash the check? Everybody cashed right, the check. here we go again. Everybody's got a great memory on that. You know, it's, it's, it's just, you know, you know. quote, I'm actually being filmed right now. End quote. Fine. Let's move on here. Julian. <laughs> okay. Now, Julian, I love Julian, so listen, I want to be as gentle as I can because remember, it, nobody likes this, to be This is churchmilton.tv. <laughs> we don't know what gentle is. These guys. That's what they say about get us. Get a We're call mean. in the middle of the night <laughs> from some media guy. Did you know you were duped? You were tricked? You were. You know, what are you going to do? Only the smartest one of them all, yeah. only George Ellis. God love him, was smart enough to say, well, that's not how it was presented to me. Oh, bravo, George. Yeah. I wish all of these other guys could have kept their wits about them. And, gee, uh, when did you see the film? Because if they just would have asked that question, they would have found out very quickly that this whole story has been written by people who have never seen the film in the first place. When, when they were getting these phone calls from the secular media, had the movie itself in its now screening final form, was it done? Yeah. Was it completed? Yeah, we're done. Okay. No, I mean, at the time they were getting the phone well, calls. Well, we, we were doing color correction. We're, we still have to do our okay, final So there was mix, no so. real opportunity for anybody to actually have seen the film when these calls were being made in the dead of the night. Hey, None they of you. them could yeah. possibly. Nothing that we would release at that time. Right, right. So nobody could have seen it. No, right. impossible. Right. Okay, so. Well, they, they did see the trailer, and I think all these conclusions are being made. Yeah, that's the true. Trailer. They're basing it off the trailer. And the trailer, of course, is a trailer. It's designed to stir up controversy. Well, of course it is. Sure and, it is. Uh, sure you know, is. we just assumed that we'd get the same treatment as everybody else, which is a foolish assumption. Yeah. We've clearly touched a nerve. We're clearly questioning something that some very far powerful people are uncomfortable having questioned. Well, that's absolutely the case. But, and hey, where, listen. And where those people are, we will get into them. Look, here's the bottom line. <laughs> I believe that it's a sign of good documentary filmmaking when the status quo is up in arms 
at the mere fact of having asked some questions. That is the point <laughs> of making a documentary So film. Julian unfortunately made a statement that he never gave permission to appear in our film. Julian, love you. That's false. Let's roll the tape of uh, Julian, and then we'll look at the agreement. Could you uh, just introduce yourself to the audience? Tell us who you are. Well, I'm, I'm Julian Barber. I've, uh, I'm an independent theoretical physicist. I live in the middle of England, quite near Oxford, uh, where I am actually also a visiting professor in physics. What are your basic impressions of the, of the conference? I must say I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, I'm getting more and more to like interdisciplinary conferences. I've been to a few too many just on my own field. Frankly, they get rather boring. Well, that's quite a, uh, uh, quite a chatter on camera for somebody who says he wasn't on camera. Well, here's the thing. Uh, <laughs> if you want to roll his release for him, too, just, you know, we've yeah, let's got, put his release got up him for him, guys. Same thing. But he mentions a conference. We had gone to Yale, mm -hmm. and we filmed him, and we filmed George Ellis, and we filmed Bernard Carr, and we filmed Bob, and we filmed... And that's why near the end of the film, we see him in the same room. Yeah, because... because they're all the same place. Yeah, yeah. Because we were at this conference. It was a wonderful conference, uh, the Templeton Conference, uh, the Foundation Conference on why is there anything. We had the wonderful cooperation of Yale and of all these uh, other people to allow us to ask these questions. Mm -hmm. And of course, this was way back in 2011. Mm -hmm. And of course, the science has moved dramatically since then, as we're, as we're going to see. And it's moved in the direction of uh, questioning uh, this Copernican principle. And again, raising incredibly powerful suggestions that the universe may in fact not be uh, just a mishmash of, uh, of no special direction or place. We may be in a very special place yeah. in the cosmos. Yeah. So he, I mean, we're, we're getting to the point. We're not going to belabor the point over and over. He signed a press release. Yes, he did. There was a press release given, uh, I'm sorry, a, a release mm -hmm. uh, given to him there. Yes. He signed it. Yes. La, la, la. I mean, same old thing. Yes. Was he paid? Yes. Did he cash the check? Yes. All right, there you go. You okay. wish all these guys hadn't cashed the check. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'm happy. Yeah. I love these guys, man. They gave us great interviews. These are brilliant guys. Yeah. They have been duped by a media hoax, but you know what? Not all of us do very well when they're, you know, hey, did you know that? You know, you got to be a little bit understanding. Well, yeah. The, I mean, the thing that's funny, well, I worked in the media for 20 years. You know this. You're yeah. it, it, more than 20 years. You, you don't get to call, when you see a movement, of you know, like just you know, wall to wall coverage, which behind the scenes, this is what this was, so they can produce all these stories. Nothing, you know, the Malaysia air crash, God rest their souls, didn't get the coverage, you know, in a 24 hour period. The plane's gone down, we'll you know, I backed it. This is like, this is ridiculous. Yes, it was. A little indie film just poking <clears throat> along the edges of standard accepted status quo of cosmology, current cosmology, which says. Ultimately, there's no God and we don't matter. Mm -hmm. You touch that elephant and it's going to turn around and stomp on you. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the lesson here. Oh, yeah. That's the lesson. Okay. But that's okay because that's why we, should, why we made this film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We knew that this was a nerve that if you touched it, you were going to be shocked. You're actually touching the heart muscle itself here. I think you may be right. You're about actually that. touching the heart muscle itself. Let's now go we, to Kaku here. What we is... we have yeah we have one uh, one other question and, and of course uh, the question is Michio. Michio was really good. He didn't deny sitting with us. Didn't have anything. To, what he said was he was upset because we he had been pulled into a controversy that he didn't want to be a part of. As a matter of fact, he said that it was what did he say, Bob? Intellectually dishonest. Of yeah, us. intellectually dishonest. <laughs> Well, you know, here's the truth. We didn't pick this controversy. And he did sign a release form saying we were explicitly going to involve uh, controversial ideas. So I, I reject the idea of any intellectual dishonesty. And as a matter of fact, we asked Michio, this didn't make the film, so you're seeing an outtake of the film. We asked Michio, the director asked Michio, you know, we've been told by some cosmologists that we shouldn't make a film about the Copernican principle because we're mere lay people. You know, and lay people can't understand the intricacies of the Copernican principle. So we actually asked Michio, should we be making a film about the Copernican principle? And I think his answer is fascinating. Let's roll the tape and hear what he says. Could you just tell us who you are and your academic affiliation, anything you'd like the audience to know about you? My name is Dr. Michio Kaku. That's M-I-C-H-I-O-K-A-K-U. I'm a professor of theoretical physics here at the City University of New York. My latest book, Physics of the Future, is a New York Times bestseller. A layman should never question the Copernican principle. They should never question where money is being spent. They should 
never ask questions of somebody of, 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 of a higher education on being able to do a documentary at, at this caliber when talking to people like you. What do you say about that? Well, personally, I think we should always question everything. Uh, first of all, why do we have this crash of 2008? It's because precisely people did not ask simple questions. Simple questions such as, why are property values keep on rising? Won't it ever peak and fall? Nobody asked that question. It's such a simple question, and yet trillions of dollars of value simply vanished because no one asked a simple question. So sometimes the simplest question, sometimes the simplest questions are the hardest questions because they go to the root of the problem. And sometimes when we don't answer these simple questions, we get into a lot of trouble. All right, <laughs> that that does not sound like to me somebody who's saying don't question. <laughs> yeah. now, Mike, yeah. Quote, you... we should always question everything. Close quote. <laughs> you saw the movie. Yes. Was there any part of that in which you saw Michio Kaku appear like a geocentrist? No. No. Did, was there anybody that we interviewed that you saw that was made to look like a geocentrist? You. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. It's, it's crazy. Okay, now, so we've, in, in a sense here, we've saved the best for last because this yeah. is the person most notable. Yeah. I, and, love, and, I love Kate Mulgrew. She yeah. did such, when you see our film, and this is what really hurts, is that yeah. she did such a fabulous She job. really did. Oh, God. When she you really see, did. It was like listening to Captain Janeway she's great. flying through she's great. the cosmos on the Enterprise. And I have to tell you, when I met her, you know, we we had such a wonderful experience together, and I won't get. There's some things I can't share at this <laughs> stage because sure. look, I want to give everybody a chance to walk this back. I don't want to have to show everything that I have. Yeah, please don't force me. But for Kate, it was real simple. She claimed that she was misinformed and that she agreed with Lawrence Krauss that he had been misinformed. I don't quite understand how by quoting Lawrence Krauss. We could be misinforming him. I don't understand how if Kate read this script for three weeks, which she did, and her management firm, due diligence, did for three weeks before that, which they did. This is a New York management firm. What is the possible basis for saying that they were misinformed, that they didn't know? It's ridiculous. So in, anyway. In, in the world, just again, to give everybody sort of behind-the-scenes things, you guys are talking all your Hollywood stuff here. Um, if... Uh, <coughs> If, in the process of making a movie or a documentary, the, it, there's difference between doing an interview with somebody who you just ask them, you know, five, eight, ten questions, and then you walk out of the thing with the tape and they put the, the sound bites together however they want, versus the person who's the narrator who has the script from essentially beginning to end, you can tell that a narrator has great possession of the material how they inflect their voice at the right dramatic moment and didn't she do that well tremendously yep. absolutely tremendously it proves that she is a tremendous voice artist with this as a narrator in addition to being an actress that's not what she's mm -hmm. doing here uh but it also proves that she knew the material absolutely <laughs> and here's the thing she no more had to be a geocentrist to read this script, and yeah. she had to believe in warp drive to play Captain Janeway. <laughs> exactly. Great, great soundbite. Great soundbite. Just bite. the way it is. So, anyway, just because we have to show your audience, our dear friends who've supported us, mm -hmm. we, we announced this film on your show. Yep. That's why we're giving you this world exclusive tonight because we really appreciate, and we really appreciate the support of, of the supporters of, of Church Militant. Yeah, and I think, I think it's important for people to, look, you know, a lot, a lot of people step out, they kind of, you know, you can't, the, the point of all of this, this PR attack is to drive them back. Mm -hmm. So here's, you know, here's a we got your back on Right this. on, man. <laughs> you know, you've got to write, look, you may be totally high. I saw you out there smoking earlier. I don't know what you're smoking. <laughs> I wasn't asking. You could be totally off your rockers. But you know what? You have a right. To present the question. Thank you. And one of the guys you asked, <laughs> you interviewed. You know, Machio says, you know, we should always ask, you know, question everything. So, you know, you announce it here. Look, we're going to come back and say, here, you know, here you go. Okay. Now, this next cue, I want you to understand this is what Kate Mulgrew read. Yes. Into the microphone. But also pay attention 
because now this brings us back to Max. Remember, back in 2011, Max said, ah, I don't think these alignments are, there's probably a mistake there. There couldn't be any connection between our solar system and the cosmic microwave background. Well, this is now post Planck. Right. We went back. Late, later data, folks. 2013, two years later. I've spent, I've spent two years emailing Max back and forth about this stuff. We've talked mm -hmm. about this. And, now, listen to what, first of all, Kate asks him, or Kate reads from the script, and then listen to what Max says about these weird alignments with our local neighborhood. Roll All right, let's clip. roll this clip. But what about the alignments with the ecliptic and equinoxes, which Lawrence Krauss had said would mean we were really the center of the universe? We asked Max Tegmark if Planck's results had convinced him that the axis of evil actually was aligned with our ecliptic and equinoxes. I have, to conf I, I have to confess that I was bothered by the fact that the axis of evil seemed l linked to a special direction in our solar system. And something in my gut was telling me that this might, even though I greatly trust the people on the double map team, point to something fishy in, in their analysis. But I also feel very strongly that I have to actually override my gut by using my brain and by looking at data. And now we have completely independent data with better detectors, completely different people seeing the same thing. So there's just no way we can blame this on the WMAP team. All right, that hardly sounds like a, uh, <laughs> uh, look, the narrative doesn't hold water. Mm. The narrative as reported in the press doesn't hold it water. It doesn't. We're, but we're going to continue this in a moment, especially with the, the Kate Mulgrew. And then we're getting into the background. How did we get to all of this? We're going to take a quick break, folks. Stay with us. The explosive stuff is coming up. We'll be right back. <laughs> Go out and baptize all nations. These words from our Lord are a command, not a suggestion. We must call the whole world to Christ. We must teach the world about Christ. We must love the world closer to Christ. We must go out to all nations on this earth and bring them into his one holy Catholic and apostolic church. As the late and great Jesuit Father John Harden reminds us, any Catholic who is not about the business of evangelization might never entertain a serious hope of the beatific vision. Get your churchmilitant.tv premium account today so you can learn the sacred art of evangelization with our latest show, Baptize All Nations. Sign up today. Hi, I'm Michael Miller. Welcome to this first episode of Baptize All Nations. All right, everybody, welcome back. Now, we told you that we're going to have a... Uh, uh, we're going to have a bit of a controversy over the controversy, and here we are. Uh, the controversy, let, let, let's pick up again with, with Kate Mulgrew. Uh, she posted something on Facebook, right? Yes. Now, mm -hmm. she wasn't the first person to respond from, from the people in She in was the number two. Number one was Lawrence Krauss. And we'll get up to him in a second. Yes. Let's go to Kate first. Yes. What did Kate post on her Facebook about her participation in this? Well, if you, if you can look at her Facebook quote, you can say that she is basically claiming, I want to apologize to all of my fans if I would have only known that Robert Sungenis was involved. I never would have gotten involved. I was just a hired voice and I was a misinformed one. I completely agree with Lawrence Krauss's cogent. Well, what? Co you know, he, he, he was misinformed, and I was misinformed, and none of us had a clue, and we're just so sorry we got involved with anything to do with this. Well, and she posted that on Facebook. Yeah, she Do did. we have that, by the way? Yes, it's, it's yeah. on there now. All right. Yeah, let's make, if that's up, guys, it should the Facebook, the Kate is up, good. All right, so you can see that right there is her own Facebook saying misinformed. Mis how, how the narrator who actually reviews the script, unlike the person who's interviewed, who <laughs> might occasionally, occasionally, if they didn't have it all their comments off camera, uh, sitting there recorded, might occasionally be able to get away with I was misinformed. The person who's reading the narration, you can't be misinformed. No, and, and it's even worse than that because we had to go through an entire due diligence process with her management firm. Our IMDB page was up 
Robert is listed there as the executive producer. Our total intent to examine the Copernican principle was full. I sent them the scientific papers about the axis of evil, told them this is what we were going to be talking about, and then sent them a script, which they spent weeks. And after the interview, after she did the narration, she liked the narration so much, she wanted to do an interview with us. Yeah. Backstage. <laughs> well, this is, one of the things, this is one of the things that I didn't want to have to bring up tonight. But truth is, her management firm didn't want her going on camera. And we said, okay, that's fine. We don't need her on camera. We're, she's, we just want her for her. She and I got to talking about this. And afterwards, she said, is that cameraman still here? Because we were filming the New York footage. She's, I said, yeah. She says, well, I'd like to say a few things. And she went on camera and she praised the script to the skies. Now, we're not rolling that. You we're not. It. I'm not going to bring that out because at the end of the day, look, I'm hoping that sanity can be restored here. Mm -hmm. Everybody got scared. Everybody decided, oh, I've been doomed. You know, let's be adults here. Mm -hmm. We've made a film. Let's let the film stand on its merits. Let's stop reviewing the film if we haven't seen the film. And let's stop being so terrified of the possibility that the Earth might be in a special place in the cosmos. And doing that, let's shift gears now away from the Hollywood crowd and the, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the production people and the people in the interview and, and get to uh, who <clears throat> started this ball rolling and why they started the ball rolling. Lawrence Krauss is not the guy who started the ball rolling, is he? Lawrence Krauss is the fellow, the, the, the atheist scientist in the film. He got a piece of information from who? Well, I can give you a hint. It ain't the Jews. <laughs> Those of you who follow... That's inside baseball talk. Uh, yeah, I'm <laughs> sorry, yeah. Well, but, the reason Fox I... and Janice has been blackballed as he is <laughs> hating Jews and all this stuff and everything else by various people uh, inside the Catholic... Uh, blogosphere, which might be better referred to as the blogosterium, because that's how they react. Um, I love that word. So it's an awesome word, isn't it? It's, uh, it's, it's just tremendous. So once again, Bob, for the record, you don't hate Jews. No. You're not anti-Semitic. No. You don't deny the Holocaust. No. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine. Lay all that stuff aside. So, but that is all part of, we, and the reason we're bringing it up, we're not bringing it up to be silly here. We're bringing it up because it is a brick in the wall of why events unfolded the way they did. Oh, yes. And I'll let you take over from there. Uh, it's kind of hard. I, I mean, I don't no. want to accuse anybody of anything. I just know they don't like what I teach. Mm -hmm. uh, Who's the they? Uh, well, me, they, the they in this case, <laughs> I can tell you that anybody who's followed this knows that Mark Shea, Carl Keating, and David Palm have taken it upon themselves to protect the rest of us from Bob son Janice. They've made this their mission for years. Let's be very honest. There's nothing about the Jews in the principle. You've all seen it. There's nothing about the Jews. This is a film about cosmology. Why is it then that in an article written in Raw Story, which was the lefty blog in New York that broke this story, the headline is, why are geocentrists trying to undo centuries worth of accepted science? Hint. The Jews. <laughs> That's the title of the article. That's the title of the article. And it quotes David Palm as saying that somehow underneath all of this, there's some, I don't exactly know how you get here logically, but somehow our cosmology film is part of a deeply devious plan to somehow... Reignite the Holocaust. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so now this doesn't make any sense right. to the rational. But these people are so deeply committed to stopping Bob Sanjanas that we noticed all of a sudden, about a month and a half ago, maybe two months ago, now, maybe even more, that suddenly Lawrence Krauss had popped out and said, oh, this film is nonsense. I, I, it's completely ridiculous. I, I said, well, what the heck's going on? So we went back and we noticed that he had received a tweet. And that tweet had said, did you know that you are in a film made by guys who actually support geocentrism? <laughs> and, of course, at that point, his Twitter page just blew up. 
And I went in and I tried to say, well, actually, the film's about the Copernican Principle. It's kind of hard to make a film about the Copernican Principle that doesn't at least your touch on the fact that that's what everybody used to believe. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, no, no avail. Uh, and it turned out that this was Mark Shea. Mark who's, Shea. Who's, who's Mark Shea? Mark Shea's a Catholic blogger. I mean, he's just a blogger. He's some guy who, you know. He writes for National Catholic Register. Yeah, writes for National Catholic Register and Pathios. And he's got his little, you know, style. And, and he, uh, you know, he basically uh, uh, decided to go ahead and start, you know, sending tweets out. He sent one to Lawrence and he sent one to Michio. And all I know is that a few days after that, Lawrence Cross came out and denounced the film. And very shortly after that, Kate Mulgrew came out and denounced the film. And then the story just went whoosh. And this ridiculous absurd headline from Raw Story. Raw Story, this is ridiculous. Why are geocentrists trying to undo centuries worth of accepted science? Hint, the Jews? <laughs> that is so ridiculous that it's, it, it, what are you going to say? Yeah, this is a tinfoil like hat thing. And we got, and unfortunately, <laughs> we've got to get into this here because it explains the rationale. Look, we're, 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 we're shrinking the universe down did here we, to the center uh, of the story. Did mm. we get a chance to show Mark's tweet? It's up? Yeah, okay, okay great. All right. So this is what launched the whole thing. And let's now, It's important for people to get this for a second. Hold on. Let's not, we know this. Let's, <coughs> let's, let's not get caught up here in Inside Baseball for a second. Okay. Mark Shea is a uh, Catholic blogger yeah. who has said very unkind things about us, too. Never mentioned his name in public before. Wouldn't be if it wasn't for this See, show. See, the difference between you and me, Mike, is you're a really nice guy. <laughs> 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 we have been... Uh, uh, it, examining like what has happened here now to show you the kind of absurdity of this and you know and it's just because mark goes out and blogs the stuff but there are many other people who support his kind of wacky idea a few years ago we had uh e michael jones on our show mm -hmm. now e michael jones is another fellow in the media in the catholic world who's blasted as hating jews and this and that and everything else we had him on a show talking about some, again something totally unrelated to the jew issue i remember the show and we said i just asked him my same question i asked you he said do you hate jews you know da, da, da. and he's like no i asked him are you anti-semitic specifically he says no i'm not and that was fine. We went on to talk about our topic. All of a sudden, from Mark Shea's little keyboard with his anxious little fingers, comes the story that we are we here, Church Milton, at the time it was Real Catholic TV, are controlled by Opus Dei money. We have been planted in here to upset the bishop and to mainstream Jew hatred. That was the line. That, that was the is money the line. Quote. Mainstream, mainstream Jew, Jew hate. Jew hatred. <laughs> oh I, I, I don't. I, I can't necessarily. You know. Anyway, I'm not getting into all the all the stuff. Uh, the only reason. No, I, that's Mark Shea's style, right? The there. only reason I bring it up is because it because it is absolutely part of the story. It is. And so anybody. Who says? And we did a piece, uh, a vortex piece on the Jews, and just called it the Jews. And it was about, uh, it was about the idea of the dual covenant, and yeah. you know that you know Jews need to, you know, our Lord came to Earth and went to the Jews first. That's right. So it's not like the Jews have a separate salvation thing going on over here. That's church teaching. It's always been church teaching. All we did was just say, hey. The way this is kind of commonly accepted isn't true. Mm -hmm. The Jews need to convert. The atheists need to convert. Everybody needs to convert right. to the one true faith established by the Son of God. Now, I will go with my soul on that point. Absolutely. And I'll go with you. And there it is. And we got blasted for mainstreaming Jew hatred because we said that. And I'm like, what? What are no, you, what are you no, talking about? No, this is about? unacceptable. And i got to say, Bob Sungenis over here. When this dual covenant notion actually got as far as a bishop's catechism, yeah. a national bishop's catechism, yeah. Bob went up against it, wrote an absolutely unforgettable article uh, in My Michael Jones's uh, yeah. journal uh, called uh, The Old Covenant Revoked or Not Revoked. And it was so devastating mm -hmm. that, you know, Mark and, and the guys who were trying to carry water for this dual covenant idea were just completely blown out of the water. We've got to get behind the sort of the philosophical horse here. The reason that, okay, dual covenant for folks, you know, again, folks at home, these may be kind of like, again, inside baseball <clears throat> terms. What is dual covenant? Dual covenant is the idea that the Mosaic covenant is still valid for the Jews. Mm -hmm. And the catechism that he's talking about, the United States Catholic Catechism for Adults, published in 2006. By U.S. bishops. Right. Not the catechism, a, 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 a compendium. Oh, yeah, it was, it was a national. Right, yeah, it was a national. A national. Yeah, yeah. And uh, on page 131, it had said that the Mosaic Covenant was eternally valid for the Jews. 
And that's a heresy. Yes, of course it's a heresy. So I wrote a letter to the USCCB. I wrote a letter to the Vatican. I wrote the article for Culture Wars. And within eight months, the USCCB had their executive session meeting, and they voted to take it out 243 to 14. That is good news. Very good news. It's really good news. Now, Every- now, now get, the, get the large scope of this for a moment here, folks. We have... A layman, not just any layman, but, you know, doesn't know anything, so, you know, very well-educated layman, but he, just sitting at home, reading the American version of the catechism, finds this heresy in it, challenges it. i, I got to believe there's people with egg on their face over that. Oh, yeah, one you of know, them's named Mark Shea. And <laughs> continually defending this heresy because the, the, the undergirding of the heresy is, is one of the pillars supporting the whole idea of indifferentism and, you know, can't we all just get along? Mm. There is this unwillingness to step out and say, this is the one church established by Jesus Christ for the salvation of your soul outside of which there is no salvation. Amen. They will not say that because it upsets everybody. It sounds mean. It goes. It's it's the credo of the Church of Nice to just downplay Catholicism That's right. and let everything happen in the door and let everybody run around and uh, it's it's insane. Mm-hmm. So you got to understand this is the context in which all of this movie stuff is happening. That's right. Because this man who says the truth about the whole dual covenant thing being garbage that the U.S. bishops put in, but the Vatican said, take it out, all of a sudden come out since does a movie. And so because he says this heresy is a heresy, and it's talking specifically in this case about Jews, he becomes a Jew hater. Well, it's, it's really important to say. And so know. a Jew hater involved in a movie like this must be blown up. That's it. Hint. That's the context. The Jews. The Jews. And that's why the Jews makes the makes a headline. It's got nothing to do with the Jews. It's got nothing to do with the Jews. Nothing to do with the Jews, unless it's a secret conspiracy. Well, that's the whole thing. If you can market that, if you can find a way to believe that, then I mean, listen, I got it's news for you. It's a conspiracy, I'm telling you. <laughs> but I got to say this. We got we to give credit where credit's due. When Bob wrote that article, mm-hmm. and he is still being punished sure. for having written that article. Yeah. But God bless him. You know, God I only him, wish man. I could say that I stood up against a heresy strong enough to have our bishops go into executive session and God bless them. Yeah. Stand up for the Catholic faith and repudiate that. It's not going to be in any future. At editions. the end of the day, what was the vote of the U.S. bishops in huge. support what was of it, what Bob? you said, of what you corrected? 243 to 14. And one, one abstention. 243 and to 14. And then the year after... The Vatican wrote to the USCCB what they call a like recognitio, mm-hmm. recognizing the change that mm-hmm. was going to be made into the catechism. Yep. So, well, you, you know, there's, on the one hand, I'm really happy that. We sorry, got, but by the way, for this record, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I just want to make this point. I want to drive this point home because I never do that. I want to drive this point home <laughs> that that this man had the overwhelming majority of the U.S. bishops backing his position right and the Vatican. So if you are going to attack what he is saying, you take your cause up with the Vatican That's and the right. U.S. bishops. All he did was say, hey, you might want to change the sentence here because it's a heresy. <laughs> now can I have a cup of coffee? <laughs> Good for you, brother. <laughs> right on, man. Good for you. Well, this is one of the things that made me admire this man yeah. so much. Uh, the very time that he was being pilloried and just, yeah. oh, God. And still I, is. Uh, yeah, it still is. I used to call it the wolf pack. Yeah. You could just wake up every morning and be 17 mm-hmm. miles. And, you know, the way this man has walked through this, it's a pleasure. It's, it's an honor. Really. So we have this group of the Blogosterium. Yeah, Catholic the Blogosterium's Catholic. after him. These are people who are, who are well, I don't know all of them, but, I mean, they, they, they're either uh, wannabe Catholic establishment media, like our Twitter <laughs> friend here, or they're actually Catholic establishment yeah. media. And, again, folks, you've heard us talk about the Catholic establishment media all the time. They have, they have to toe the party line, and the party line is, you know, ecumenism, Protestant, Protestantism is just as good as Catholicism, mm-hmm. except for a thing here or there. We've got to get along. Everybody be nice. Don't give offense. Don't judge. Oh, we never know, you know, that there is a reasonable hope that all men are saved. Bull, there is a reasonable hope that all men are saved. That is not true. That's Another true. tenant. So, you know, Jews don't need to convert. Nobody goes to hell. You know, we can't judge. Don't give offense. These are the pillars upon which the Church of Nice are built. Hmm. 
and is built. And anybody that touches any one of those third rails must be blown up. They must be discredited. They must be accused of mainstreaming Jew hatred, exactly. of hating Jews and denying the Holocaust, and on and on and exactly. on and on. So and, you know, even if that's they make, the context, all this is happening. Even if in. they make films about cosmology, that's going to be somehow about yeah. hint. The Jews. It's got to be about the Jews. Everything is some so, conspiracy related uh, to the it, Jews. It, it, These guys are high. Yeah, they it's, it's are crazy. high because you, they've got to support. They've got to support a system. That they've got to support a philosophical flow, a river, because that's what keeps their stupid Church of Nice boat afloat. Yeah. You know, I, I've made a career. I've been a Catholic apologist, theologian for twenty years, mm-hmm. and during that time, I have critiqued the religion and the politics of Catholics. Jews and Protestants. Catholics probably twice as much as I've done the Jews. Mm -hmm. But does anybody call me an anti-Catholic? No. (laughs) I love the Catholic Church. That's why I want to see it better itself. That's why I point these things out. So I'm no more anti-Semitic by pointing out things that I see wrong in the Jewish politics or religion than I am as a Catholic. You see, that's my job. One as a of your theologian. producers on the show is the executive producer was Jewish, right? On the show, on the movie, right? Yeah. Well, no, one of our marketing people is. And I'm sorry. Marketing. What I love about this guy is he happens to be very liberal. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, he couldn't be further away from us in worldview, but he liked the film. Yeah. He came and saw the film, and he really liked it before this whole thing blew up. And like three days after he saw it, this whole thing blew up, and he was so offended. As a liberal Jewish thinker. He was so offended by this because he knew what the film by was. By the controversy. Yeah, yeah by, the, by yeah. The, the media hoax. Right. Hint, it's the Jews. He was offended. Yeah. So he came aboard to help our film and has brought help to us from many, many. There's going to be, believe me, uh, those who think that it's just a knee-jerk thing, oh, the Jews are going to gang up against this movie. Oh, yeah, I got big surprises yeah. for you guys. There are very, very honorable very ethical men who are committed to the idea of intellectual freedom and freedom of inquiry, and they are Jewish, and they ain't buying it, and they are helping us, and that makes me very, very happy. We're very honored to be working with them. Yes, and and that's a whole other issue that we've been dealing with, and that is thought control. Yeah. You see, we're engaging in thought crime because we're saying things that you shouldn't say, okay? So we're going to make a movie about that someday, yeah. too. Uh, we're, we're sort of... We're I think sort of, I know where you can start with some interviews. Yeah. So how you <laughs> but what I can say is this. We've weathered the storm. And ironically, if you have a Bible and you take a look at Psalm 57, 6, they have dug a pit and have fallen into it themselves. Yes. Our film is now probably the most controversial independent science doc in history. Certainly yeah. one that's just only had a two-minute trailer put out. Sure. We've had zero promotion budget on the movie, and we've probably gotten $10 million worth of free promotion. We've now got an announcement to make. That's it. Here we got two minutes to go. It's I, the two-minute warning. I want to give We the, promised you. I want to give the <laughs> honor to my uh, partner, Bob, but we have, thank God, in no small part due to all of this attention, mm-hmm. we have secured the holy grail for a film like this, honestly, which is the ability to take it out into the theaters uh, and to be distributed uh, by a company that has a track record and a long experience. Bob, when, when are we going into theaters and who's going to distribute us? I can't give you all the details, but I'll give you some. And Rocky Mountain Pictures is our distributor. And they have agreed to release it in a major city, in a major theatrical market on September 19th of this year. So, I mean, and I, I think this is very important because... Less than four months. Yeah. Less well, than four a Catholic blogosterium, you've got less than four months to destroy the opening of this film. These <laughs> Jew haters cannot be allowed to succeed. No, wait a minute. There's more to it than this. Rocky Mountain Pictures, we picked primarily because these guys... They don't cut and run. They did Expelled. Yes. They were the distributor of the film Expelled, which was Ben Stein's examination right. of academic uh, thought crime control. Mm-hmm. They also did Obama 2016 last year, which was a giant hit. Great they movie. started that movie in one theater in Houston, Texas. By the time they were done with it, it was in 2,000 theaters across this country. Mm-hmm. Grossed over $30 million. 
They were attracted to this film from the day we came here onto your show. They were tracking us. They heard about it. They saw the numbers. They loved the controversy. They're picking up the film. And what I love about them is they aren't going to cut and run. So anybody who wants a, a tussle, all right. We're down. Very good. Well, it'll be you guys versus the blogosterium. We'll yeah. see who wins. And now, but that, bring, <laughs> that brings us to one thing. Yeah. What we do need. Now, understand, our film threatens the atheists very, very seriously. Sure. For two reasons. Number one, you're not supposed to talk about the idea that the universe was designed or could give us actual evidence of design on its large scale. That's a no-no. Well, I'm sorry. That's what we're seeing in our telescope. That's what you see, yeah. Now, reasonable people can disagree about what these observations mean. We tried to make a reasonable film that allowed smart people to give their viewpoints. That's apparently unacceptable. Well, tough. Here we come. But here's what we need. Our opposition is very, very fervent. The new atheists have all the malevangelical fervor that you could imagine. Yes, they do. We used to have each other ba others back. We used to stand together. We used to be on fire. Now they are. So I need 200 people watching this show to get in touch with us. And if you can put up our website, yep. right, we're going to build an army. We're going to build an army of 200 smart, committed people. You don't have to be Catholic. You just have to be interested in intellectual freedom. You just have to and be truth. interested. And truth. And let the chips fall where they may. We have a fabulous film. We have a film that is absolutely worth the shot to go see and to make sure that these media hoaxes don't prevail. We need 200 folks who are willing to step up and become part of Team Principal. We will introduce you to some of the top marketing professionals in the film business. You will learn how this works, and you will have an opportunity to be a part of certainly, in my humble opinion, the most important independent science film that's come along in a very long time. So drop us a line. Let us hear from you. Let us know that we can count on the support of the people who I know are, uh, we are we never would have gotten this far without the prayers and support of our uh, of our church militant viewers, and so we need your help. Step up, help us. The We've principal movie dot com. The principal the movie, principal movie dot, dot com. com. Final word, Bob. Well, I'm just happy to be here. Thanks for having us. Oh, and I know that's going to be a a great show, and a great movie, and a great movement. September 19th, folks. September 19th is when the cosmological bomb drops. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thanks so much, Mike, for having us. And thank oh. I love your operation here at Church Milton. Love to come out here. Love to do a movie about your operations. Oh, okay, I'll hold you to it. All right, you got <laughs> it. But on that $30 million thing, we'll take a finder soon. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we're going to wrap up with a prayer to St. Michael here, as we always do, and then we'll say goodbye. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Sacred Heart of Jesus, have mercy on us. Sorrowful and Immaculate Heart of Mary, pray right. for us. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It's Michael Boris with Bob Genis and Rick Delano signing off for churchmilton.tv. Mic'd up. God bless. We'll see you next week.